What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. It all comes down to this, boys. This is your 2016 European World Championship Qualifying or Finals. It is PK Fire versus Magician Pendulums. You guys know where I stand on this match. I think that Karen is a hard counter to the entire PK Fire deck. So I'm going to take some mirror. We got Samir versus Carmelo. Once again, I think that's France. Oh, no. Anti-spell fragrance. I'm flipping my pick. <laughs> no, no, no. It's one game. Okay, I think this game should be fucking free. Um, we've got Carmelo uh, running PK Fire. And we've got Samir uh, running Magician Pendulums. Uh, I think Corinne is a hard counter to Magician Pendulums. Or excuse me, to PK Fire. Because I think that a lot of them don't run Strike. I think that a lot of times they don't have a way of stopping it to get on the, uh, stopping it from getting on the board. But if you open with anti spell fragrance, none of that matters because I literally think that this card. I think this card beats the whole deck. So I think he tacked into an ancient cloak. All right. Uh, you know what's kind of weird? He is kind of locked out of his burning abyss now. When you play anti spell fragrance, so I mean you want to be able to summon something now. A lot of effect. There's so many effect veilers going around. Looks like Samir has an effect veiler. And I'm like 90% certain that Carmelo runs uh, Carmelo runs Effect Veiler as well. I think it's really just that Monarch hate, man. Is it that Monarch? Because it, it it's just so useless against PK Fire. Effect Veiler is, you know. Um, I guess against Tour Guide. When Burning Abyss had three Tour Guide, Effect Veiler was good against them. Because, you you know, they used to like normal summon Tour Guide all the time. And if you Veilered it, then you were pretty much good. All right, we see we see the Seer. Maybe the Seer is going to just slam into the uh, the Little Lizard draw. Little Lizard draw will die. I don't know what those spells that are set are. I don't think that they're traps. Um, if they're spells, they're not live yet. They're not live until it's his turn. This could literally be a potential beatdown match, which is kind of strange. Usually you see anti-spell fragrance, and you're like, he's got this. He has three Fog Blades set. Oh, my God, three Fog Blades. So, yeah, this is really bad for... Um, for Samir, because he's getting Sky Iris, and we just know that Sky Iris just, it's a field spell, which means you have to set it and then wait it. Like, it's going to take him forever to be able to activate that and do anything with it. You know what I mean? Like, terraforming is so bad when you're, when somebody has anti-spell, because you have to set it, then activate it, then set the field spell, then activate it. It takes, like, forever. You know, four turns basically go by before you can use that field spell. Okay, Lester Pendulum is played, and maybe you might consider fall blading this. He does. All right, so Luster can no longer attack. It no longer has an effect, and it cannot be attacked. He really, really needs a don, uh, another Burning Abyss. Just any Burning Abyss. It doesn't matter what it is. Any Burning Abyss will do. Just any of them. I think he might have top decked a PK. Uh, yeah, I think he has a PK. All right, so he went with Ragged Gloves. Um, Seer will blow itself up, unfortunately. And, dude, you got to be able to capitalize. You opened with... Uh, Arguably the number one card to counter pendulums in the entire game, even more than domain. I'll I'll take anti spell fragrance over domain against pendulums any day, because then you just turn it you just turn the game into a beatdown where they really can't play because they can't really special summon. Alright. So Oh wait a minute, hold on. Um what just happened? Did he negate the... Hold on. Instead of... Oh, I think I know what happened. I think he may have used Fog Blade. I got it. God, I got it. He did not use Fog Blade on, on Lester. He used Fog Blade on his own Seer. So to make it so it couldn't be attacked. I got it. Smart, smart, smart. So now he can actually exceed. Okay, I got it. I, I was like, why is not why is Seer not blowing up? He used Fog Blade on his own Seer to make it so Seer would be negated. So it wouldn't blow itself up. And he would also make it so it couldn't be attacked. Now, unfortunately... He met that effect veiler, and that's really bad. I would have went for Dante. I think it's crazy he went for Levy. I think that's greedy. Dude, just go to Dante. Dante is, is your heart and soul of the deck. Like, go to Dante, get your mills going, and then see what you can do from there. I mean, he's got a lot of fog blades, don't get me wrong, but, dude, you got to go for Dante, because who knows, maybe you get lucky, you get a graph or a Skarm, and then your whole deck is just, you know, your whole deck is just revved up at that point. So I think it's kind of crazy to go for Levier and try and go for this hyper-aggressive play when you could have went for Dante, just the standard play, and just been pretty good. All right. Looks like he's going to add some cards. I think that that is... I think that's Silent Boots being added to his hand. If PK Fire wins this finals, boys, expect for a break sword to be like 100 bucks. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be 100 bucks. It might go up like another $10 or $5, though. Okay, now he'll probably... 
Samir will probably flip over that, what's it called? Oh, he tried to attack, and this time he is shut down by... Looks like he's shut down by um, the second fog blade. I thought he might flip over his... Yeah, I was thinking maybe he was just going to try and flip over the Sky Iris. Now, he goes into Draco Faceoff. He can only summon. He can't play anything in pin zones. So, literally, whatever he gets is going to run over that Levier. This is kind of crazy. He will, might end up winning this match, even under Anti-Spell Frame. This is some crazy shit. So, Vector's going to run that over. Seer's not doing any... See, this is why you should have went for Dante, man. You would have went for Dante, bro. You, you would have had this. Seriously. And you might have you might have milled a burning abyss too, because now Seer doesn't do anything. So and he can go into Ignister, maybe. Maybe you go into Ignister. Nope, he's gonna XC summon. No, he's not gonna XC summon. He's gonna contact. No, he's not. He's gonna synchro. I'm wrong. I'm just I'm just gonna stop talking. He's wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> I thought he was synchro summoning. Okay. Now he's got the big Ignister out. And he has to use the third fog blade. Okay. Man, I thought maybe he was trying to. Pop the face down and get rid of the... He obviously wants to get rid of Anti-Spell. That's pretty obvious. Flips over the Sky Iris. I'm actually going to say Advantage goes to Samir here. I mean, this is crazy. You just don't see PK lose many matches when they open with Anti-Spell against, you know, against Pendulum decks. But I think he drew too many of his Fog Blades instead of searching them. He has Archfiend Eccentric and Light Phoenix. Okay. What is it going to be? Now, Ignister doesn't have an effect because of Fog Blade, but that is like literally the last Fog Blade he has. Uh, the other one's in the grave, and you obviously another one is on the field. Okay, we're going to see maybe a summon of Archvina Centric. That's going to get blown up by Sky Iris. And he gets a copy of. I want to say that's Odd Eyes Fusion. And here's the thing about it is uh, Ignister was like one of his best ways of removal. He probably set the Odd Eyes Fusion so that um, he could be able to use it next turn. Because he could go into, what's it called? He could go into Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, which would honestly probably win in the duel. Because he can't special BAs right now, so he has to normal them. So if you put that in attack mode, you just keep attacking. All right, there goes Boots. Show me the comeback, buddy. All right, another Boots. Okay, so he's booting them up. All right, so this might be the time where you go into the, um, this might be the time where you might want to go ahead, try and pop a set card with Break Sword, and then, you know, rank up in the Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon. I say rank up, but it's really just an XC summon. All right, there's Break Sword. Maybe even get rid of, um, what's it got? I was thinking maybe even get rid of Sky Iris. He's going after the face down card. All right, goodbye Odd Eyes Fusion. Now that's the now that 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 would be not the break sword that is attached to um, Ignestor. I would assume, for my sanity, it needs to be, <laughs> it needs to not be. Like hopefully Ignestor's still locked down. If you have any chance of winning this duel, it needs to be anyways. All right, he still has that Light Phoenix. Maybe he wants to tribute something for it. I think Light Phoenix is like a six, right? Like a level six or a level five. It's a tribute monster. I'm pretty sure. All right, he's reading his Sky Iris. And doing a little bit of hand shuffling. I don't know what that set is either. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the set is. I'm pretty sure that they'll they'll say what the card is on the table at some point. Wow, he went for the tribute summon of Karen. I like it. I like it. Okay, so Fogblade goes to the graveyard. And I mean they're both 2000 attack monsters. Do you just consider bouncing, maybe? What is the follow-up play here? Or do you maybe use Sky Iris? Not, like, I'm not sure what the play is. Because they're both 2,000 attack monsters, so you're not running it over. I think he actually just passed. Oh, no, wait. No, he did not. He attacked. Okay, so they're both going down. Fair enough. I was like, did he just pass? All right. No, he didn't attack. I'm sorry. He bounced. Yeah, he bounced because it went to his hand. I'm like, why isn't it an extra? He, so he just bounced. Okay. I guess, that, I guess that's not a bad play. All right, we got both players setting back and forth. This is crazy. You just didn't. I just didn't expect this match to go like this. I, I really expect PK Fire to just steamroll. All right, so now he's banishing his Fog Blades to get more monsters, and I think Break Sword's coming right back out. And then yeah, I, th I think Break Sword's coming out, and then maybe you go into Master Key Beetle. Oh no, Dante. I was thinking maybe you go into Master Key Beetle, and then you um. 
maybe you would, what's it called? Maybe you'd protect your anti-spell just to make sure it never leaves. But now he's going into the Burning Abyss half of the deck. He has Farfa and Rubik. It wouldn't surprise me if he got really good mills here because, you know, I think he still has things like Graf in his deck and Seer and Skarm. So it wouldn't be surprising if he got really, really good mills. Goes into second Dante. thought maybe he might go into Grand Pulse. Maxi, Twin Twister, and I well, think that's Skarm. Yeah, I think that's Skarm. Free Tour guys for the win. Okay. Farfa. Graph. Oh, the graph off the top of the deck. That is incredible. And he knows he can feel pretty safe against some, whatever Samir has set. It's Pendulums. You're not even supposed to be setting monsters to begin with. So he'll obviously be able to activate Graph and then having that Farfa 2 under Dante. And scoop phase. All right. So my pick is uh went down in flames. And honestly, I'm just I'm surprised that I'm actually I give um I give Samir credit. I didn't think that I didn't think he'd be able to drag that match out as long as he did. So we are one match away from crowning a champion. I like how cordial they are being. You know what I mean? They're talking to each other. I wonder if they're speaking English because I think that's France versus Germany. So, yeah, I wonder if they're speaking English or if maybe they're speaking another language. So, all right, let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit. But that was actually a really good match. It was. It seemed like it should have been over, like, turn one, and it actually ended up being pretty decent. So, my pick right now of Samir is not looking so good. Uh, it needs more Karen, man. Seriously, just get Karen on board turn one and take have that card take it to the promised land. All right, looks like they're about ready to start game two. Let me skip forward just a little bit. Uh, one more. All right, there they go. They've got their hands. Judges are getting the coverage for the written site. Okay, looks like Tamir opened up with Magic Spike the Raccoon, and I'm not sure what else I can see. That could be an Alert Darkness and Carmelo's end. The green card that's on the top, because it's really, really dark. Like I think that might be an ultimate rare Alert Darkness. Okay, so he has Magic Spectre Raccoon, Magical Abductor, Draco Faceoff, Flash Knight, and Luster. So, I mean, as long as he can get his scales right, he should be able to do a, a nice pendulum summon here. The normal summon is probably going to be... The normal summon might be... Um, hmm. What would the normal summon be? The normal summon is probably going to be Magic Spectre Raccoon. He plays... Uh, he plays... What's it called, too? He plays uh, Magic Spectre Fox. I love that card. Free Tornadoes for the win. All right. Gets one counter. All right. So it looks like he gets Master. He gets uh, one counter on Magical Adductor. And what else you got? Flash Knight. That is just... That's some interesting tech right there to main deck Flash Knights. I think I play that in my normal Pendulum deck with, like, a whole bunch of Vanillas. And, like, all, I can... I think there are a lot of them, like, Dinosaurs and stuff. But don't really see a lot of Flash Knights in competitive play. Maybe that's the secret tech to win in this tournament. It's 1,800 attacks. That's pretty good. All right. He will goes for the normal summon. And there's Ignister. All right. Ignister isn't out to anti-spell fragrance. So don't have to worry about that. All right. So Ignister might be looking to summon Master out of the deck. And there's Master. What else do we got here? Plays. Okay, so he plays uh, Raccoon in the Pendulum Scale. And. Huh, did he just. Oh, I think he just spun back his. Uh, I think he just spun back his. His. What's it called? I think he actually may have just actually spun back his. <laughs> his copy of Raccoon to his deck. <laughs> okay. Um, what just happened there? What the, hold on, what the heck just happened? Oh, I know what happened, I know what happened. He just searched off Magical Abductor. Oh my god, he searched off Magical Abductor and got Karen. Ah, there we go. And he popped it, so, okay, then he played, that's, oh, I got what he, I got what he did. I think he spun back his, his, uh, Pompaco so that he could activate Flash Knight so that he could get the third counter, then search Karen, then massively pendulum something. Like, okay, there you go, I'm with you, I'm with you. Dude, those are next level plays. That shit went way over my head. I'm like, what are you doing? I think he might want to. You know, I think I think this is a good time for Dynister, maybe. Yeah, for or, or maybe Majester into Dynister. 
Is he looking for his Magister? There it is. Yeah, maybe you go for Magister and you then bring out Dynester. This will just be such a loaded field, too. I'm not even sure that I would go for... Like, I'm not even sure... I know you can go Titanic Galaxy. I don't even think I would here. I think I would just leave my field at it as is. Like, it's it's already too strong. It's Twin Twister proof. Um, my Pendulums can't die by battle because of Dynester. I've got Ignister sitting on you, looking to potentially spin whatever you put on the board. And then I've got... Um, I've got... What's it called? I've got uh, Corinne looking to bounce. Hey, I, I actually did my... Uh, I used the proper uh, terminology there. <laughs> Bounce means the hand, spin means the deck. So yeah, you've got a spin effect in Ignister. You've got protection out the wazoo with your Dynister, and then you've got bounce power with um your Karen. That may this may have been one of the sickest openings I've ever. And he has the Twin Twister. It is so dead because of Dynister. Yeah, see, I, I wouldn't even go for. I wouldn't even have went for Titanic. You don't even need it at this point. It actually makes your feel much weaker. And, dude, he's going to need some cra something crazy here to get out of this. And you look at all that spell and trap removal that just does nothing. He has, twin tw he has double twin twisters. They're double dead. They're double dead. What are those? He has double twin twisters. And I think he has a typhoon. All three of those cards are fucking dead. <laughs> he has a fog blade, but that's not going to do anything either. Like, literally, if he doesn't put monsters on the board, he could just have everything go on attack mode and just kill him next turn. Damn, Samir. Back at it again with the broken turn one fields. All right, we shuffle. And, okay, there's a potential XC play here. The problem is, you guys know that Karen basically owns all XC monsters. If he goes to Dante, I don't even think he'll bounce. He won't bounce until battle phase. Because, like, there's, like, no reason to. He goes into Dante. It doesn't matter what Dante mills at this point. Nothing is really scary when you have Karen's protection. You know, anti-spell fragrance... Uh, Ancient Cloak and what's it called? Ancient Cloak, Twin Twister, and Anti Spell Fragrance. Looks like he wants to move the battle phase. Battle, okay. Uh, thinking maybe attacking over Corinne. You know that's not going to happen. He's totally going to bounce the, the uh, Luster Pendulum to his hand. Oh, it doesn't die in battle. Oh my god, it doesn't die in battle. Rip. It doesn't die in battle. I totally forgot about that, Nister. Oh my goodness. Oh man, just scoop. Scoop phase. <laughs> scoop phase. <laughs> See, people people call me so bad on my stream when I do that. Sometimes I forget about Dynester's effect. Even fucking people in the finals do that shit, man. You guys need to stop calling me bad because I be forgetting about Dynester's battle protection effect. Even fucking pro players, <laughs> they fucking forget too. <laughs> oh my god, it doesn't die by battle. Oh man, yeah, I think I would honestly I would have just scooped. I'd have just scooped like right there. I would have been I'd have been too embarrassed to keep going. <laughs> I don't know, like you guys. You could just have a title. I'm going home. <laughs> When's the next flight to fucking Germany? Wait, no, this is in Berlin. All right, he's going to bounce for good measure. Seer will trigger, and that'll get him something? Uh, maybe a Skarm? Yeah, I, I just think that... I, just, I think the game is just so hard when your opponent has... I think the game is just so hard when they've got Karen out, man. You have a Corinne plus a Ignister and a Dynister. Like, golly, the Dynister Ignister wombo combo powers. And one of the judges reading uh, Dynister. It's actually a shame that he doesn't have more monster zones. He literally would be able to summon like seven cards because of, um, you know, like Dynister, Ignister, and Majester all being able to summon things. Like, he actually needs more, plus his normal and his pinned. Like, he just needs more monster zones. Good thing Konami didn't put like eight monster zones in Yu-Gi-Oh. They'd have to raise the life. Eh, that would just be a no. It's just a bad idea. It's like they'd have to raise the life points like twelve thousand. That's just no. This just make the game stupid and complicated, more so than it already is. All right. So Graph is played. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure Graph's gonna get spun to the hand, so that he doesn't even have to worry about attacking and these endless floating monsters that Burning Abyss have. Like I would just consider like normal summoning, then bouncing. Ah, he went Fog Blade on the Dynister. Okay. Now he's going to Twin Twister now that he no longer has the protection. Fair enough. All right. This could be the comeback. I don't really think it is, but, I mean, it could be. Stranger things have happened. Keep in mind, he has double Twin Twisters. So, you know, maybe you want to use the Ignister now on the Dynister. Nope. All right. So he's going to use the ability of Magister and Outcomes. Okay. So Outcomes Master in Attack Mode. And I just think his field, I just think he doesn't need his scales at this point. 
All right, Archfiend Eccentric just to blow up a back row. Yeah, I, I just feel at this point he doesn't need his, his pendulum scales anymore. His field, is, his field is so good now. He doesn't even need them anymore. All right, Archfiend Eccentric basically just a tribute itself for an MST effect or tribute on field for a exiled force effect. Is he looking at Twin Twister, maybe? Let's see, what are you, what are you doing here? Uh, what are you doing here, Mello? All right, so he activates Typhoon on activation. Okay, that's fine. I mean, you, you still end up getting a rid of, you get, you get rid of a Speller Trap. You just don't control which Speller Trap you got rid of. I actually know, I think, I don't think Grass is going to get bounced. I think it's going to get spun. I think it's going to get spun with the Ignister, and then he'll, put, he'll just put everything in attack mode, just ram. Maybe he's thinking of doing something else. Yeah, I, I think he does not need his pendulum scales at all anymore. I think he got so much value and so much he got so much out of them turn one that he just made this fucking ridiculous colossal board that like no game it's gonna be difficult for just about any game in the deck to break. And he's got Maxi on top of that, so. Alright, I think he's using the Ignister effect. Checking his hand, sees that Maxi. Keep in mind, Ignister does not target, so he doesn't have to show him anything. All right, face down goes back. That was Twin Twister, if I was not mistaken. Okay, so Twin Twister is back in the hand. And there's the bounce for the graph. And I think here's the contact. All right, there's the, um, the what's it called? There's the number 38. Oh, I think he might be Pendulum Summoning. Pendulum, Pendulum. All right, massive pendulum summon and GG. Going to game three. That may have been one of the most impressive fields that I've seen turn one. It went over my head. I was like, wait, where did he get Karin from? He didn't trigger. Like, there's no way he actually triggered Magispect the raccoon. He played the raccoon. Then he popped uh, a monster on field. Then he spun the raccoon. And that gave him his third counter to search. And then he summoned the Karin that he had just searched. I was like, yo, fucking next level plays. Make this guy the president of Yu-Gi-Oh! or something like that. Alright, we're going to skip. I love, I absolutely love the sportsmanship going on in this match. They are so cordial. I've, I haven't, what's it, I've never obviously been in a match of this level. You know, never anything this high. But I always remembered um, when I made regional top eights. Like, those were, those were some of the most fun matches that I ever had. I think, let's see, uh, top five times. Like, I want to say four of my matches, we actually, one of the matches we didn't play top eight. But, like, four of the matches, I think we did. I'm 4-0, by the way, in top eight. <laughs> Just putting it out there. But, um, yeah, I was. it was always so cordial. And it was, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that you were just kind of relieved to be at that point. Like, man, we, I don't have to grind through three more rounds. Like, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. I'm fine. I, you know, you think that there's a lot of pressure on you. Well, not in, you know, a regional top eight because there's, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. There's no more duels. But I just think at some point you're just kind of happy to be there, you know, still doing. And it kind of feels like the pressure is off of you. You made it through that grind of, in this case, you know, I think these guys did like 10 rounds of Swiss. You know what I mean? Or at the NAWCQ, you do 12 rounds of Swiss. And when you get to like top eight or top 16, you know, you're super friendly with your opponent because you're like, man, it's so nice that we just, we, we made it through that, man. We made it through that gauntlet. You know, win, lose, or draw, like, I can be I can be happy knowing that, you know, I succeeded in this tournament. So, this dude is uh, putting pendulums on the map, man. Putting pendulums on the map. And also, I think he's going to get Karen limited. Because <laughs> I, think, I think he might win this tournament. If he wins this game, he wins the tournament. And I think he's going to get Karen limited. And hopefully he does, because that'll be good, because I, I cannot stand that card. And the biggest reason I can't stand Corrine is it's not even that good in Mag It's not even good in Magic Specters. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong, but it's like, it's not even broken in Magic Specters, because it's so hard to summon in that day. You have to tribute summon it, because they're scaled. They don't have high, like, no, I, I do run Archfiend Eccentric. Sometimes you can summon it with Archfiend Eccentric, but it's not even that hard, like, it's not even that easy to summon in its own deck. But in the Pendulum Edition deck, in this deck, it's fucking broken because they have, you know, super high and super low scales. So, you know, interesting enough, I don't think we've actually, I guess that's why it's called Magic Specter Pendulum. We have not seen any, I think he runs zero Pendulum Editions. I don't think he, he runs Sky Iris, but we have not seen, have you guys seen any, like, Dragon Pits or Oath Dragon? We haven't seen any of that stuff, so I'm going to assume he doesn't run any of those cards. All right, so... Speedroid Terra Top, another card that's going to get limited. <laughs> um, you hear from me. Speedroid Terra Top is played. Got him to Taki Tumberg. 
All right, here's the Dante number one. Don't be greedy. Just go for the Dante. Get the pluses. The homeboy Dante. Speaking of other cards that are going to get limited to one, this is the last hurrah for Dante. All right, those weren't exactly the mills that get you excited, but he has anti-spell fragrance, so that's all you need. And he can summon double Dante. And he can have a Farfa under his double Dante. Yeah, he can have a Farfa. He can have a Seer. This might even be the triple Dante hand. Could it be him? No, 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 because he, if he special seer, then obviously he can't, you know, can't use the, what's it called? No, he is not normal though. He is, yeah, he is not normal. I thought maybe he might normal seer here. Get that triple Dante anti-spell fragrance hand. <laughs> that would be super dope. All right, Mills, three more cards. And at least he got, I think that may have been Ancient Cloak. Uh, no, excuse me, correct myself, that was Silent Boots. All right, milled in a fat veiler, which still not super think that card. I don't super think that card is great in this matchup. Probably would have sided out. But, I mean, honestly, if I looked at his hand, I'd probably say that he's going to win. Because, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think Magic Spectre Magicians are have, have an advantage in this duel. But, like, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at I'm looking at Anti-Spell plus, plus uh, Fog Blade. I'm like, damn, dude. And he's going in the Lady Beatrice. Yeah, this looks really good, man. Unless he obviously rips the Twin Twister. Twin Twister changes everything. Because he's got Joker. I was almost going to say Joker. I don't know why I always think Joker Coon when I say that. Oh, my God, the MST. No way. Ripping the MST off the fucking top. This dude is a god. No fucking way. He runs MST. MST negate. My mind is blown. MST does negate Yu-Gi-Oh! community. We just saw it here. MST negate. This month. <laughs> this is so crazy. That should have been G. I oh my god. I almost want to rewind that shit. Just to, I'm gonna have to watch that like four times to see how the crowd reacted. MST off the fucking top. My mind is blown. I was trying to save some of my energy for Evo later tonight. It's gone. It's gone, baby. This is the type of match that, that just gets your juices flowing, makes you love Yu-Gi-Oh! again, even though it's competitive, and sometimes it can be a little boring when people stall, but this shit is real. All right, he pops the back row, and dude, if he some... Oh, he has Corinne in his hand? Oh, man. Wait, wait let me look at the scales. Uh, Monkey Board? Oh, yeah, I think he's, he's going to win, because Monkey Board gets... Uh, What's it called? Monkey Board gets... Ba -ba 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 Monkey Board can get Odd Eyes Unicorn, which is a... Um, What's it called? Monkey Board is can get Odd Eyes Unicorn, which is a super high scale. So he couldn't summon the Karen, and you guys know I think Karen is a win condition against like every deck, basically. All right, so he's getting Vector. I think that's gonna be summoned. I think he, uh, kind of surprised he didn't get Lust. Oh, he has Luster in his hand. That's why. Yeah, dude, he might get Ignistered and Karen again because he just had that happen to him last duel. That MST off the top was fucking savage. MST negate confirmed. Now, he's going to play Monkey Board. I wonder if he's going to get here. Or if maybe he'll exceed first to try and go for get rid of Lady Beatrice with like a simple Castell or something. All right. No, he's gonna, it looks like he wants to activate Monkey Board. <clears throat> and remember, even if uh, Carmelo had Typhoon, I think you have to control two. I think you have to have two Spoiler Traps on the field for your opponent to be able to use Typhoon from the hand. Wow. So he's using Lady B's effect. Maybe drop a Farfa to get rid of one of the monsters. Detaches Dante. And see those uh, Typhoons, but obviously... Well, no, he doesn't have a hand anyway, so it's, it's not even a point. Not even a valid point. Cap being dumb. All right, so Vector goes bye-bye. Wait, that's not Vector. That's Lector. My bad. Lector goes bye-bye. And... Okay, gets himself a uh, Farfa off of Dante monkey board i still don't think that's gonna save him i actually think he's in a worse position now than if he hadn't done that <laughs> i feel like he's in a I feel like he's in a work i feel like maybe he should have waited for a nister there's the odd eyes uh unicorn so adorable so adorable and i just love it because it's a high scale so it just lets you summon your good stuff yeah i think he's gonna get ignistered i think he should have actually saved the farfa maybe no i i can't think of a reason why he why he burnt the farfa there because you should have waited for an XC or a Synchro or anything. Maybe he thought that... Oh, my God. Pendulum so balanced. <laughs> Pendulum so balanced. <laughs> That's where you just scoop once again. You just scoop. Here comes Ignester. Because Pendulum something so balanced. People wonder why Yuya wins on the TV show. The only reason he wins because he got the Pendulum summon. 
<laughs> it's so balanced. All right, time for Spinnerino. I think Lady Beatrice will probably get spun. Then Joker will get bounced. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, GG. Oh, man. You can't. Once once pendulums get rolling, dude, they're stronger than any deck in Yu Gi Oh! Like, when they when they have the Ignister. MST negate! He kissed the MST! MST negates! And he's looking. He's. Been, Carmelo puts his head in his, in his hands and he says, I thought MST didn't negate. I thought those were just dank memes. He's like, nah, bro. MST does indeed negate. What an amazing finals. Thank you very much for watching, guys.